Welcome everybody, thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode we will bring you our favourite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you, and we're here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more, you create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome everybody, welcome back to our episode this week on the Infinite Prosperity podcast. I'm so excited to have our special guest with us today, Anita Davies. I've known Anita for a number of years now, had the honor of, uh, she's a client of ours and the honor of working with her. And Anita is a huge inspiration to me. So I'm so excited for you to get to know her and for her to share a little bit about her incredible mission. So by way of intro, I'm going to share Anita's bio and then we'll dive in. So Anita is on a massive mission, a really important mission to raise awareness around accessibility for people with sensory loss, in particular sight loss, and is committed to changing the perspective of over 500,000 people in her 50th year. Anita has had sight loss since birth due to a rare condition and has been a world European and international champion, won loads of awards and was nominated as one of Wales's most inspirational women in over 100 years. Yes, Anita, I'm so excited to hear all of this. And Anita has worked on the field of sight loss for, for 30 years and runs her own holistic mentoring business called Holistic Vision. And I know our listeners are, who are all driven to make a difference and to create a legacy that has that ripple effect around the world. I know this topic is going to be so hugely important for them as CEOs of their own companies as, as they consider how accessible you know, their services are and what they can do to improve them. So Anita, a massive welcome. Hi, Louisa. Thank you for so much for um, inviting me onto your podcast. Really. I'm so excited about doing this and, and just talking about this mission that I have, you know, to change that perspective of those people. And even if it's just one perspective I changed to, or that's just another one to, uh, to that's going to make a difference in the world. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for everyone to, to meet you. L- well, let's start with as we dive into our conversation, because, um, you know, I mentioned that you've got your own business, Holistic Vision. Tell us a little bit about your business, Holistic Vision, and what led you to running your, your own business? So I went, I set up Holistic Vision p- p- partly because I wanted to, to do therapies with people. So first mm-hmm. of all, it was so that I could do my holistic therapies because I knew that they had helped me through a difficult time in my life. Um, where there was big changes happening for me and then um, doing my my professional career working in the field of sight loss for over 30 years and working with other disabilities there was an aspect of that where I wanted to be able to work with people who had ill health who had varying Mm -hmm. disabilities and and because my own children my son's got a physical disability my daughter's got a sensory impairment and I could see, you know, how holistic uh, therapies would help people in lots of different ways. But also within my professional career, I've been an access auditor and I've worked within what was the DTA in 1995 and now is the Equality Act. And so part of my holistic therapy business is not just about looking at a client and how we can improve their lives through holistic therapies, but it's also about um, helping to educate people, to train people, to create awareness about how the environment around how services can be adapted and how reasonable adjustment can be made. So there's a training aspect to to the work I do as well and an auditing aspect where we can help people to understand how they can make a difference in what they do to the lives of people with ill health or disabilities. 
That's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. I love the two aspects of your business. And if I may say as well, that you are a very gifted healer, psychic <laughs> as well. <Thank> you. <laughs> you just sort of brushed over those therapies that you, you work with. And I just thought, I just need to give you a little shout out there because you, you're, you're incredible. That's yeah, I, cool. I do quite a few th different therapies. And each one that I've done, I've done them for myself over the years. And then I trained in them because I realized how much that particular therapy at that time has actually helped me in my journey and uh, and and so I you know I've, once I've had that therapy and I thought yeah that you know that's made a difference to me I've had my own personal experience and then gone and trained in it so I, I've probably got about 12 different things under my belt so I, I just love learning about new things all the time. Me too we can learn so much mm -hmm. can't we from all the different modalities I think it's just such a beautiful gift from the universe to be able to um, bring that combination that that wisdom through and, and in your own unique way of uh, of working ultimately mm. as, as well as you've got all that breadth of knowledge oh so so good so you mentioned around um that a part of your 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 business is helping people and business owners to be able to um in alignment with the equality act to be able to make their services more accessible it, this might be an, an obvious question to ask, but with accessibility, so you know, why is this so important to you? It's important to me on a number of different levels. It's important to me on a personal level because of my own experience, because of my own sight loss. I obviously have uh, some difficulties in and how I access something. So I have to use, uh, predominantly I use a speech software. I do use a magnification software as well uh, to, to help me a little bit. Uh, with navigation but mainly I need to be able to listen to something and so when you need to listen to something it means that if you're going to access the internet if you're going to ask access material that is in any kind of electronic or printed format it needs to be done in a way that enables the speech software to interact with it so if it's an image for example then my speech software won't read it so it it, mm -hmm. it, it becomes very inaccessible to me then and so when I have done courses in the past, whether it be somebody who's taken part in a course or whether I've actually taken, I've been um, a practitioner on a course, there's been a number of times where that's not been accessible to me because maybe the, the handouts have been done in, a, in an image-based PDF and, and you know, people, and I totally understand why, but people have maybe been a bit fearful or anxious about mm -hmm. providing that to me in, in a format or they haven't really known how to do that because in all honesty, I, I'm quite often in, in my experience in most of the courses I've done or most of the things that I interact with, I'm actually the first person they've come across that has got a visual impairment that maybe has needed uh, that the accessibility to things in, in that way, in, in, a, in a speech soft way, way. And that presents lots of questions to me also only because there are like over 2 million people with sight loss in the UK. And it's hard to believe that I would be the only person with sight loss that wants to, you know, to, to be in, to develop herself personally mm. or professionally. So there are going to be other people out there, but if things are not accessible to them, then they're not going to want to, to pay that money out and, and engage things or they give up um, because their experience is, is a negative one. And if they don't know, I'm fortunate because I've come from a background where I can teach and train people mm. and I can, I can express what my needs are. I know what my needs are and I know how to, to explain that to people. But a lot of people out there with sight loss, they, they don't, they don't have those skills. So therefore somebody like myself and other people like me who do, we, we need to be out there uh, educating, teaching people, showing people in all sorts of different ways mm. um, just to, to create that awareness and sort of say, look, if you want to open up your services to people with sight loss, um, whether that be, you know, you're a therapist or you're a grocery store, it doesn't really matter who you are, but if you want to be able to open those services up so that more people can access them, then, you know, uh, we, we, we can do that. There's a way in which we can help you do that. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. And I know that, um, you know, from our own experience as, you know, just to share, because I think it can be helpful recognizing where when you've got an intention to make your business accessible as 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 we have and we had put various things on a website and then realized to our horror and thank you to you for your feedback 
that things weren't being picked up by the screen reader, even though we thought that they would have been. So being able to have open conversations where, or to be able to test it before your clients are coming in so that um, you've already got it in place. The systems are already up and running, which we didn't have, although we thought we had, but we were, you know, we worked to, to rectify that. Um, because of course, if it's that thing, isn't it? Of you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> um, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and, and until you um, invite somebody who's got the experience in, like Anita was saying, you can do business audits for people so that you can kind of find out where you need the tweaks before you need the tweaks, if that makes sense, so that mm. your clients can come in and work with you straight away and have that. You know, I want people to have the accessibility straight away and for it not to feel different. Mm. I don't want it to feel different, you know, and I know it, it has. And I'm so grateful from from your perspective of being you flagging and, and speaking up and saying, hey, <laughs> Louisa, this isn't working. Um, you know, my screen reader is not picking it up so that we could rectify it because we didn't we weren't aware. Mm. Well, that's right. And the thing is, I, you know, I, I, I just kind of believe in, in all of the my experience over the years is that if we if, if we have this as a seed in our mind at the very beginning, when we're wanting to build whatever that service is or deliver that service when we want to to produce our business if we kind of think well how do i make this accessible to not just people with sensory impairment but people with dyslexia you know people with other conditions that creates them challenges around reading mm. um, there's all sorts of conditions out there that are not just due to somebody's sight loss but that causes a person's uh, a person challenges with how they process information and so when you consider that, it, that are, again, there are over 2 million people with dyslexia, there are, you know, around 2 million people with sight loss, you know, in those, in those two categories alone, you're potentially looking at 4 million people. And then there's all sorts of other people with um, processing challenges. But if we kind of think at the beginning, well, if, if your work is mainly online or then through websites um, in social media in some shape or form, then... Like, well, how do I make this more open to all of those people? Because it becomes more, it, it's, it's more flowing. And mm. if you kind of hit that challenge of like, well, I, I've now got somebody who's got a process certificate or sensory impairment. And then you've got to go through this, this other process where you've got to try and make it more accessible. And, and that might be more challenging for you. And the flow is not as, as well, it's not there in the same way. Um, yeah. And the person isn't maybe, you know, potentially they're not able to keep up with the, the rest of the group in the same way. Mm. Um, and so it doesn't, even if the rest of the, the people are kind of engaged in stuff, the, the person with those challenges are maybe, you know, there's all sorts of feelings and all sorts mm. of stuff going on for them. And we want to kind of try and avoid that really so that they are able to interact at all sorts of different levels with whatever it is you're offering, mm. but, you know, anybody offering is offering out there so that that person can still feel very much part of the service part of the group part of the the energy that's going on yes that's absolutely key and I love what you say um around the different types of um because there's more to think about isn't there in terms of um whether you, the the documents or the website is um screen reader friendly if that's the right uh, term uh, as you were saying around just using dyslexia as an example I'm just picking up on that because I have dyslexia and my son is dyslexic and one of the things that we recognize was particularly with the way I write is I might write a really complicated sentence and actually that's not going to be accessible to everybody so one of the things that we're doing is going through all our documents and using Grammarly to make the sentences very simple so that they are accessible for, because they don't need to be complicated. Yeah. Um, uh, so that it's easier to easier to to, to read, you know, yeah. um, and to make it more accessible. There's so much that we can do. I think that's the the thing like you were saying is actually if we can set if we can set our businesses up right, and of course many people are going to be out there and you know haven't had that kind of the, the wisdom that you're sharing now um, at the at that point of their you know setting up their businesses but it's it's you know something you can look at and build into your practices to review along the way um but you know setting things up right at the beginning um I think you, you mentioned to me it actually saves money getting it set up you know uh, at the beginning in the right way taking into consideration making everything accessible 
Yeah, because I, I mean, just from an electronic perspective, I mean, mm. I, I am not somebody who is very IT minded. I turn the, the, the device on and I expect it to work <laughs> in, a, in a particular way. And then when it doesn't, then I'm like, ah, but um, <laughs> I, I, I know from, <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry. I know from friends who are, um, that my son's a data scientist, for example, and I got mm. a friend who writes websites and, you know, there's this whole thing about the coding of how the web, a, a website is done. So there are different ways in which websites are designed and set up. And there's um, this whole coding thing that goes on in the back, background with designers around how they, they do that. Now, the, the key thing for, for me, if I could change anything, it would be about getting those designers, the, the people who are, the actual people who, who write these codes and these designs for the websites that then offer them out to you know either um just to small businesses or to companies and say well okay use this platform etc cetera, etc cetera. you know they're the ones that are if they if they were producing the accessible websites in the coding in the in in the first place of course that would make it easier for for lots of people but i suppose if you take it that at a, a level where so the people who are then choosing what platforms they want to use if you're not aware about whether that pl platform is how accessible that platform is so you might use a platform that is actually more image based than it is because the way you're coding is then then it would be maybe on a different platform where you can actually more easily change things so like i'm just going to give wordpress as an example so mm. you know wordpress is is adaptable you can change things in wordpress better than you can in other uh, websites designs now i'm not a website designer i know people who are Mm. And so I don't have enough knowledge on that, but I do have the knowledge around, you know, the the really um, the the really basic things that you can do to make that website accessible. And of course, we have um, obviously the softwares that we use, and um, whether that be through mobile devices or through assisted softwares, and all of that set, that side of it, you know, can seem um, maybe a bit more complicated. And we I won't go down that road, but the simple thing is that there is a process that all of those device that all of those softwares use to in order for their for, for whatever you've got on your website to be spoken you know yeah. there's this basic principle that they all use and so even if um that person was aware of the questions they could ask to uh, these uh website platforms so you could say well you know is this platform accessible to a screen reader so even if you just ask that question, you know, that that um, platform then could sort of go, well, actually, either yes or no, or we don't know. Mm -hmm. But but even at that level, you could make a decision then. Well, OK, if I want to make my my service, my my business, my service more accessible, then I could we could, you know, just even give some people hints and tips around some questions they could ask um, at that initial stage. Do you know, I think it's a key question that all business owners would want to ask for when they're coming from that place of wanting to make their services accessible. Um, that is a real, you know, really key. It's like a, um, a deal breaker, really, if a service isn't um, able to have that function or, or they, you know, even if they're, they're in that space of going, not yet, but we're looking at and we've got it in process that uh, to bring it in by such and such a date, for example, um, mm. to, to show that they're, that they're adapting things because software is changing all the time. I think one of the things that we came up with was with, with Google Docs, it had changed some functionality within it. So mm. Google Docs were working and then they weren't working and we were like, yeah. what, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah, because that really confused me. I was like, I used to be able to read this. Why can't yes. I read it anymore? <laughs> Me too. Like, and, then, and then you found that thing that made it read again. Yeah, I was very proud of myself for finding that. I, I was, I was so proud of you as well because I was just like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's, I think there wasn't an announcement that we had, you know, to become aware that suddenly our documents weren't accessible. But um, you know, I, I just mentioned that because things do change, don't they? <laughs> so. they, they? They do. They, they do. And I, and I think that's, you know, if you're not. So if you're somebody like me who is not very IT minded, so I, I've got staff who who teach technology to people, and I mean, believe it or not, this is the back in back in the early nineties when technology used to be far more simplified, and we were still doing DOS based, you know, 
DOS, it was mm. like DOS and it was Windows 3.1 come out. Um, and I was, I used to teach computers then. I used to teach assistive software, I used to teach computers. Um, but these days, I wouldn't even want to go near it. But, you know, I've, I've got staff that teach that. And of course, then yeah. they, they keep up to date with all of this kind of like, oh, well, you know, even with the with with iOS on an iPhone, you know, they get updated and there's things that it now does and the same for Android and, and and with Windows, all these updates that Windows does. And the companies that write the um, assisted software programs, they've got continuously keep up to date with whatever these updates are with the with Windows or, you know, with these different platforms. Um, but somebody like me or you, we wouldn't necessarily know all of that stuff because we're just kind of using it and they they, mm. they and it may be that in uh, in the deeps of the the software it, it kind of tells you about those updates but we we don't necessarily go out and spend time reading down through all of these update things do we we're just like oh well it's doing an update but yeah. then you realize that that in updates having some kind of um impact but there are um organizations that are um companies that can can support that and sort of go right okay well um now we're on this update this is what we need to be able to do and that's what going back to that question of when you're using a platform say for example the website you can say well how how accessible is your platform to to people with disabilities you know whether it be dyslexia sensory impairment um, or other kind of um processing challenges where people have had strokes brain injuries you know where they may have autism yes you mentioned just thinking about that so it's asking that question of you know is this screen reader compatible and i think this is really helpful because often we don't know what to ask you know and so um is being able to have somebody to, to to guide you in terms of okay these are the kinds of things that can come up and you mentioned about business audits and that's something that really you know i thought was oh this could be really really helpful for for people to know that there is a, a way that they could have that that support in to go, you know, you've had a look, these are the things that you now need to, to focus on. Can you speak to that a little bit about what, you know, what, what is a business audit from a, an accessibility perspective? So there's a couple of ways you can do a business audit. Mm. So you can either go to somebody like myself or, or, or another company uh, that are people that I work with who, who do that. And you can sort of go, right, this is my business. This is what I do. I'm either, you know, maybe I'm a trainer and I deliver mm -hmm. training in, it could be a list of therapies, it could be in finance, whatever it is you deliver training in. It may be that you use videos to, um, as part of your training. Um, it may be that you, uh, you, it may be that you, you, know, you give out hand, handouts. It may be that you actually meet people face to face, whatever it is that you do, but you sort of go, right, this is my business. This is what I do. And they can actually go through uh, whatever you did. So we're just going to use the example of training. So they would go through how do you deliver that training? Um, is it all done online? Is it done for webinars? Is it people watch videos and then they look at hand, how do, handouts? Is it done on your website or some other kind of platform um, that enables you to, to do that? Um, I think I was using, for somebody, uh, the course I'm doing, I think they're using Vimeo, I think it's called. Okay, um, Vimeo, yeah. Yeah, which is a kind of another, you know, another platform. And um, so anyway, they can look at, we, we can look at how are your videos? Are they, are you, do you use a lot of visual language? So mm -hmm. somebody might, um, it, I, you know, in, in some of my examples that in some of the courses I do, um, the, even just somebody said the saying, right, if you, you put your hands together like this, mm -hmm. and then you move your hand in this direction, but that means nothing to me because yeah. I don't know what this or that direction is. So by changing the language, so it's more descriptive. Um, of course, it gives me or anybody that isn't needing to physically watch the video. So, you know, some people will actually listen to something as they're driving along the car or as they're washing the dishes, or whatever. They're not necessarily looking at the screen. But even if you've got something on just an audio, like playing on audio, when there's visual, visual language in that, of course, even that person, as you don't have to be visually impaired, but they, you know, somebody who's just listening to that on an audio player, they they won't actually really know what you mean by this and this direction. If you're using some kind of whiteboard, um, so you're putting something up on the screen, or you're using um, presentations, you're, so you're putting presentation up on the screen and you're talking about the presentation. But if you're 
referred into the presentation in a oh sorry we just in, in a, oh God, where is it? best ringtone ever <laughs> um, <laughs> if you'd referred into the presentation in a non-descriptive uh, way so you sort of sit, you're talking um around the presentation but it's not descriptive in, in a way then that person might not really um understand about whether the some of the things that you're talking about is actually on the presentation or whether it's you things that you're adding to it you know so mm -hmm. if it, you you can so that they can look at how how you're actually uh, running those courses how you're delivering them and they can see well how accessible or not they are and then they can kind of advise on well these are some of the things you might want to tweak or adjust. Some of that stuff you could do yourself if you wanted to sit and spend time, you know, just listening to if it's videos, it's a, if it's verbal stuff, just sitting and listening to it. Or even um, it would be a bit more challenging if you you were needing to, unless you use an assisted software or you learned how to use them. Obviously, that mm. would be a bit more difficult. Whereas in the audits, because we already have the, the softwares we use, we can actually just check how how well they're using so even just things like links you know when you're um when you've got a pdf or or a document that you're giving to people as part of your training depending on how you have that set up will depend on how the p the the, in, the speed software will interact with it so it may mm. be that it only reads links or certain paragraphs but doesn't actually read everything within the the, the screen just because the way it is it may be that you use in tables so some a lot of people use um very pretty word documents where they've got like little tables with grids but of course um if you've got a screen reader it doesn't it on a word document it doesn't tell you that you're you've got maybe a a, a chart with four columns it will only read right. the first lot of columns so if you mm. don't know that there's another three columns obviously you've lost the the context of whatever it is in that document or if you've got to fill in a form um some people will put the form into little boxes or they'll put like dotted lines but of course for you to be able to fill in you've got to delete all of that before you can fill it in and mm. um, and if there's if there's lots of boxes within a in a form so you've got an, a, a box that says first name and another box that says surname but they're kind of spread along the form then again the the speech doesn't necessarily pick it up um and there's so there's lots of different things we can test with the software um even around you know when some people say oh book into my calendar and they send you a calendar link but it may be that that calendar link isn't uh, totally accessible so it doesn't necessarily um read to you or you know when you the, the screen pops up and you've got a scroll yes yes or mouse click through you if you can't actually physically change it on the keyboard then it's not entirely accessible because obviously you can't use a, a mouse if you're if you if you're blind and you can't or if you've got somebody okay. with vision like me where you yeah. I would have to use the magnification software to zoom up the screen to find where the dates are do you mean on yeah. the, the screen and that can take a bit longer so there's lots of different things that we can look at to see well how accessible that is within the audit but there are some things that people could depending on the type of business and depending on what they're using they could actually look at some of those things themselves but of course that's that could be time consuming for them well exactly and i think you the one of the things when you showed me the screen reader and how it was working on the, the you know within the membership site and what was working and what wasn't working that was so helpful because i just uh um speak to that for for a moment we we didn't not realize that some of the coding because of the way we'd set up just to go back to that bit meant that the the links so the links were working but if we used an icon as a button that wasn't working if i remember rightly yeah that's right and so just a quick tweak of instead of using the icon or having the icon there but having a link underneath then the screen reader suddenly picked it all up again and we're like oh okay that's yeah. just a really easy tweak but of course the the way we were you know checking things wasn't going to pick that up without having that technology and being able to 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 to, to recognize that and yeah what came to mind as you were speaking um around the the um benefit of testing the links etc and uh, along with the screen reader because i would imagine that if I'm approaching a service and I'm on their website and the screen reader isn't picking something up I may go away and use, you know, 
purchase services from somewhere else where the website is more accessible and my screen reader can immediately pick something up if that makes makes sense oh, oh yeah no, no, no yeah no doubt yeah. that and there's i i wouldn't i i wouldn't even entertain if i couldn't get information off somebody's website easily mm. and i had to do a lot of work for that then i would if it, if it was something i was actually going to pay for I would actually go somewhere else, even in even down to booking hotel rooms. You know, if I can't easily book a hotel room, and I have to go then and find somebody cited to do it for me, mm. um, unless you know I have to use that particular hotel, then I would have to phone them. And of course, sometimes you don't get the deals over the phone as you might get online. Yes, that and then outrageous. and then yeah, and I have to yeah. explain then. Well, I can't do it on your website because it's not very accessible. Um, so. It, you know therefore then I'm being discriminated against because if yeah. you had an accessible website you could do that but yeah it's it's it's, it's a deal breaker really because you're, you're not going to pay for a, something that you can't you mm. can't read and mm. I've actually had people and some of the things people have said to me there was somebody something I signed up for or oh, about two years ago and um they initially said that, that this particular um organization said that they would uh do their best to make things accessible to me anyway signed up um and then the first thing they had was this book that I had to read and and the book was completely access inaccessible it was an image book they were like um not our problem and they were totally not interested in in helping me access the book at all and it just happened that a friend of mine had also sent the book and she actually rewrote the um she copied and pasted lots of different things from the book and put them into a format that I could read, but the company wouldn't do it at all. They wouldn't do it. And <clears throat> no, and, and I just couldn't, and they were like, um, no, it's just too much work for us because their website and everything that they did was, 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 was for them, it was because it was so inaccessible. A lot of it was image based and it would cost them too much money to go through their designers to, to change that. Um, and so I actually didn't continue with them because they what they said at the beginning and what uh, what became the situation once I got into the course and involved with them were two different things. Unless I paid more money for they were only willing to do it if I paid for their higher advanced programs. And I was like, well, no, you can't provide it to me on a, you know, on your basic level. Once yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, I think I remember you telling me about that. It was when you came and joined the Wealth Portal, I think, if I remember rightly. Mm, um, probably. You, yeah, you were sharing your experience around that. I remember feeling really <laughs> shocked um, because one of the things I, I believe this is on us as business owners to make sure our businesses are accessible. And we may not have it all perfect, of course. And be okay about that, but to have something in place to think about, okay, well, maybe I can't do this now, but I can do this. And to be letting your community know about what you're going to do to improve things. Yeah. Ultimately, because it does take time, like, you know, doing the business audit, going through, seeing what's working, what's not working, where you can make improvements. Like the example you said about, you know, if you use a lot of visual language, um, how you can make that better so that you can be more descriptive so that if you're describing something like using your hands in a certain way to be really mindful about actually the language that you're using so it backs up the image that you're sharing um mm. yeah and i'm sure you know with with that many people won't have thought of this kind of stuff if um you know that it, inclusion and accessibility hasn't been you know part part of their part of their world I know we come from you know similar backgrounds in that my my background is I used to be but one of the roles I had in when I was working for social services was head of equalities and diversity so doing equality impact assessments as we were launching mm. programs and things was very much part of my world um and uh you know they they could be like huge documents <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people many managers would be like oh you know terrified of and all these things that they need to implement but the the result was a better service for everybody yeah but i mean i, I also say when i used to do the um disability access audits i used to say to mm -hmm. people if you can honestly if you can make your environment or your service accessible to pe a person with sight loss then you ex make it accessible to everyone if you make it is is if you make your service accessible to somebody who 
uses a wheelchair, then there's a whole group of people that you also make accessible to. You know, so that could be you know, people using pushchairs or people with mm-hmm. maybe limited mobility for some reason, you know. Um, so between those two things, you know, it, you can actually make that service more accessible to so many people because, you know, when you, I think, are you, I, I just, when I, I did my NLP training and I, are you NLP trained? No, I'm not. I'm, no. I've done some courses, but I wouldn't say I'm, mm. I'm not certified as an NLP practitioner. Well, when I was doing my NLP training, I discovered, or it became, if you like, a, a light bulb moment or a lightning mm. moment for me in that I discovered that I was a visual learner. And mm. I was a bit like, well, that's a bit sick. It's a bit sick of a joke, really, isn't it? Because, you know, you, how can you be a visual learner when you don't see things? Yeah. But of course, I discovered, I, what I realised is that when people give me, I hadn't actually realised this until this point, mm. but when I'm listening to information, I'm building a picture in my head, my head rather, an image in my head. And this is how I cope a lot in my life, how I navigate around. Because when I learn about things, when I learn about my environment, when I learn about um, a technique or when I learn about anything that I'm doing in my life, I'm listening and I'm building this picture up in my, my head and I'm getting this mind map of whatever it is that I'm needing to learn or needing to remember. Mm-hmm. And um, it made that, that, that kind of made, helped me realise about, because on the NLP training, we learned about all the different ways in which a person learns because it's neuralistic, um, NLP is like neuralistic, I can't even say now. now it. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's, we, it's, we all know the one you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's because it's about the way, the different ways in which people learn. So, of course, when you're doing video presentations or um, when you're giving people information out, it's and, and if you've anybody's ever done kind of their teacher training, you will learn about all of the different ways in which you have to deliver your training so you you um you make it accessible to all of those different types of learners, regardless of whether they have a disability or not. But the added layer on top of that is that if you learn about how, like how do you provide information in a more descriptive way, how do you use those words, and you become aware of that, then it actually just adds that more that another layer to it, and it makes it so much more inclusive. Yeah. To what you're doing. Yeah. It really, it, it's part of if we're committed to building a legacy making a real difference in the world and offering world-class services then being our services being accessible is 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 a must and it needs to be I believe part of the part of our business planning part of our you know quarterly reviews all the things that we would do when we're as as CEOs looking at our companies it just needs to be woven into that so it's not like an add-on a separate thing um, mm. if it's something that we're not doing you know it, it's new to you or you haven't yet got it in train just you know making that start taking that first step and um like you know having it as a a, a project that you're going to roll out and just get things better and better and better mm. totally agree <laughs> <laughs> so you, everyone needs to get in touch with Anita because your services you know are uh, uh, amazing and being able to support people you know um Getting, getting it right for, 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 for everybody um, so things yeah. are accessible. I know we've touched a lot on businesses. Um, one of the things that, um, you know, you, you mentioned prior to us, you know, jumping on and chatting was about what we can do in our homes because, of course, as business owners, we live in a home as well. And there's loads that I know when you've shared different experiences where there's things that people can do that they might not have thought about Um that can be simple things that we can do just to make the environment better. Um, tell us a little bit about what can we do at home, Anita? It, I mean, it's just simple things. Like, so when when I'm when I'm out and about, um, I use the you know the inside part, of the payment, to mm-hmm. help me navigate my way up the street. I mean, ideally, we it's, it's in the centre payment, but you know, depending on how the streets being designed and how wide the payments are. And especially if it's been day, you know, you've, you've got to be able to um, use different aspects of the street for you to be able to, to get from A to B. And so I use a, a long cane. And mm. because I use a long cane, I will maybe use, uh, touch the person's garden wall or the inside of the 
the, the street so I can just kind of check where I am and where I need to turn, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, but some of the, the, the challenges I come across is, you know, just on a really simple level of, you know, people have bushes on their walls or they have um, flowers that hang over the walls and, and that's all kind of really nice. But when they get to the point where they start to go really out into the pavement, I mean, I'm only five foot, but the number of accidents I've had because, you know, there's been brambles or bushes or um, plants that have just grown over the wall. They haven't been kind of kept back, really. Mm. And when you you don't see very well and, and suddenly you're you're hit by a bramble in the face or um, you're, it gets caught in your hair um, you, or you're not expecting for this thing to whatever it is you've walked into to to mm. be there and that could be also a car on on a pavement though I hope I totally get th this whole thing about why people maybe park on the pavement but if you take up the whole of the pavement and you don't need leave enough space for a, a person who uses a wheelchair or for a person who is visually impaired it means that they may not be able to get onto the road um, and especially if it's a busy road, because we learn routes, we learn how to get from A to B in a very particular way. So when somebody does something that changes that route because they parked on the pavement or um, then you can feel very unsafe and, and mm -hmm. you're like, well, what do I do now? And if you're somebody that if you're a wheelchair user, you may have tipper bars, which prevents you from being able to get off the pavement unless you're on a, a low level. And so. It may be you just can't get off that pavement um, and it may be getting off that pavement and your wheelchair would cause you to, to fall out of it. You know, so there's lots of different reasons Dangerous. why mm. some can't get off that pavement. And somebody like me, but I have to kind of make a decision then. Well, do I try and go into the road and get around this car and back onto the, the pavement? Um, do I you know, cross the road or what, what do I do? And for some people, I mean, I have a lot of confidence. You know, I, I'll I'll, I'll do there's not very much that stops me or prevents me from doing something and um, but there are many 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 people that I support in the work that I do who actually wouldn't step onto that road they would actually turn around and they would go home again and they wouldn't continue to do whatever it was that they were setting themselves up to do that day um, and and so I, I just think if we can create some awareness around how people's behavior about like well could you, you know, if you've got overhanging um, plants that are grown into the pavement, you know, that co could cause an injury or um, damage to somebody, you know, hurt somebody in some way, or if you're, even if you're just parking your car, just kind of think, well, could I actually, what is the consequence of me putting my car here? Could I put it somewhere else that doesn't, that, you know, potentially cause um that a person that's walking along that pavement the the fear or the stress of not being able to continue with whatever it is that they were whatever it is that they were going that day and the the common things that people say to me is well I was only going to be five minutes or I was only there for five minutes well you know somebody like me can come across at any time any moment you know you just you might not know that in my area alone I know that there's at least 12 people that live fairly close to me where I live that have got sight loss now other people may not know that but I know it because I work in in that field but a lot of those people don't grow up because they're, they're fearful and some of that is because they've caught themselves they've had accidents you know um and so I just think if we if we think about what we do the consequences of 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 of, of uh, how we be even if we can just be a bit more aware of that um, then it would make life so much more safer for people when they're out and about when they have particular types of disabilities you know and just to have that um awareness and just be able to say to somebody if you see somebody with, with you know this maybe a, a visually impaired you could say to them well do, do you need um any can I help you in any way do you need any help from me and they can they can just say oh no thank you very much or yes please you know yes yeah that those are great great pointers I love the question around um you know what's the consequence of me parking here um because that bit about and you can see why people think, oh, I'm only five minutes, you know, um, but that five minutes, you haven't told the person who's coming along the street, I'm only going to be five minutes, you know, <laughs> and it's inconsequential to, to the person who's parked the car, but has an incredible, huge consequence to the person that's come across that obstruction mm. on, their, on their route. Thank you so much for that.
really understanding the impact of those quick decisions that people make when they're out and about. I'm just going to pop, pull up here without thinking um, about what the impact of that that decision can be for, for, for other people. And that, yeah, and and, and this just it, it's um, I, I mean, I I I am of the nature of actually go and knock on because my son's a wheelchair went to you so when he was when he was small. Mm. Of course, sometimes it just meant that we we actually just because of the way the environment is we we couldn't actually get any further other than unless we could get past that car because the roads are either too busy or we just couldn't get off the pavement etc and with having a visual impairment as well and um, having to make that decision about taking him into the road with his wheelchair which takes a bit more space up in a road than yeah. if somebody's just walking along it um so of course I used to go knock on every door until I found the owner of the car <laughs> and I'd say could this you why I love you Anita you know <laughs> and, uh, my, my kids would absolutely hate it but I would I'd be yeah. like no because it means that I can't get you down to table tennis or I can't get you to whatever we're going because we can't get past this car and um and it's far easier for them to move the car because mm. the other choice is it, it, it was to just go home otherwise or take a very long convoluted route to get to you know which might take us a mile out of our way and that's no exaggeration um you know to get to wherever it is that we were needing to go and all I need to do is find the person Mm. and just explain to them you know about the the consequence of that but I mean that is something I'm quite passionate about because you know people may park in a bus stop or um or park near the bus stop and so therefore you know one of the the concerns you might have then is that the best will the best see you because if you can't see the bus come in or um you need the the bus stop is a is a high level bus stop so that you can easily get on the bus but if you can't see the bus coming you're reliant on the bus driver seeing you but if a vehicle is between you and the bus then they mm. may not be you in time it's, it's just kind of some of those things but it's kind of just think about like within our um own homes in our gardens in the environment outside our house it's kind of like well if I couldn't see very well or if I had a disability how would whatever that environment whatever's going in our environment whether it it's you know it's it's been day because I don't know about around you but on bin day all the things are just chucked all over the oh that I live and it's awesome. kind of don't go out on bin day you know yeah. <laughs> but, and it just things like that you know about yeah. people sort of thinking oh well you know I'll, I'll I'll get my bins in or I'll put my bins um you know somewhere where it, it could be a bit safer you know it's, it's just I suppose thinking about some of those things really yeah, thank you so much. There's so much there so that people can just practically do just to have in their awareness, whether, you know, bin days, where are they parking their car? How is their hedge <laughs> and the plants and anything that may be spilling out into the road impacting, you know, their, mm. their neighbours that uh, may be affected by um, such uh, overgrowing hedge or, or or whatever whatever it may be? Because, of course, no one wants to be the, the cause of uh, accidents that um mm. neighbors may be experiencing from that mm. oh you've you've talked about so much there's there's there is so many simple things that we can do that just take that little bit of consideration just to make it um uh the world more more accessible uh, online and uh, in the i was gonna say it's like virtual reality and <laughs> and reality um thank you so much uh, Anita, how can people get hold of you? Because you've got so much wisdom that you can share through the services that you offer to help people have, you know, uh, businesses that are accessible so they can be proud that their business is accessible and, and to lead the way. Well, they can, there's multiple ways you can, you can contact me. So there's my website, which is www.holistic-vision.co.uk. I am on Facebook as Anita Davis. Um, I do have two profiles. Um, there's a prof one of my profiles has got myself and my uh, two children um, in my picture of me, and the other one has got uh, me at one of my um, one of my awards. And um, so you can contact me on either of those uh, two pages. I am on Twitter um, and I am on LinkedIn as well. And also they can contact me on my my mobile. Uh, which is 07929-280518. And I'm always happy just to have a conversation with somebody, you know, just to even um, answer some of the questions and set the any kind of ball rolling with them, really. Thank you so much. And um, I really encourage everybody to reach out to Anita to um, see what else 
that you know they may be able to do to to <clears throat> make their businesses more accessible i loved how you just dropped in one of my many awards that um, i've won <laughs> tell us yeah. before we wrap up because i was like yes you know european international champion won loads of awards tell us a little bit about all these accolades that you've um received well when one of the things that has, one of the things i've been really proud of of in my life so in my early in my late teens early 20s I women visually impaired women weren't allowed to compete in judo internationally so you couldn't compete outside of your own country and um so the men were allowed to because it was a Paralympic sport for men but women there was nothing for women and so I after one of the British championships I was asked if I would go around the world with the men to develop women's judo to show that women you know could compete equally at the same level as men did so yes. I went around the world with the men and um, it was an interesting experience because, of course, they had no provision for women. So I had to change with the men, <laughs> shower with the men. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Beat with the men. But um, it was it was it was a, it was all a really good experience. And um, when I went to each of the countries, they, they had the female like uh, a, a sighted female com- competitor that because yeah. sighted women could compete. Um, but visually impaired there was no facility for uh, visually impaired women to do that so I would compete with the sighted women Mm -hmm. and then we the and then that created us to have the first uh, French internationals and then there was the German and then it went on from there and then when there were some enough countries together they had the Europeans and then they had the worlds and um, I I, and I one of my my when I suppose my next you know um, biggest thing I was kind of proud of then was that in that period of those years, I was um, actually won every international, every world championships, every European championships over over a period of about um, over about ten years, and that wow. until I had my son, and then I, because my son was once my son was diagnosed with his condition because he was born with cerebral palsy, and I decided then that it was time to take time up for him. Um, because he needed a lot of support etc and uh, so I actually retired then but I used to run my own judo club which was a mainstream judo club we used to have um, children and adults um, they used to come and then over the years so because of that I, I won a lot of sports awards um, you know, we went to the palace and, and had uh, some time with the queen because of winning oh. awards um, so that was very nice I actually didn't realise I didn't realise who the queen was until <laughs> the disadvantage of being visually impaired is that you don't realize the queen is standing in front of you and she says, she says hello oh, you recognize you her voice. <laughs> yeah I was sort of um yeah I said to, to me she was kind of going around saying hello to me and I was like so I, I said because I didn't realize she was in the room they didn't make an announcement to say that oh, she was in the room which, which in. didn't tell yeah she, no. she, and uh, and I said well um so what's going on here then they were like oh the queen's the queen's in here and I was like oh is she I said where is she there and then there's suddenly she was like oh hello why are you here and I was like oh I won the world championships yay <laughs> but, um yeah so and then over the years because of all the different I, I do a lot of community work set up charities and then all sorts of different things so I've won the work awards for my community work and uh, my son um because I've also done international work with the British Council where I did active citizens work and things so because of some of the international work that I did and um, the work I've done with people with disabilities, I didn't realise it until somebody sent, my son actually sent me the link, and which was that the Wales Online had selected me as one of Wales's most inspirational women over 100 years. So um, they selected 100 women. Yes. And, yeah, and I thought that was just kind of amazing because um, it wasn't something, you know, I, I said, it certainly wasn't something I was expecting. I didn't even realize they were doing it. And my friend's son sent him an article and said, oh, look at this. And my son said to me, I was just like, oh, that's oh, it's amazing <laughs> and so well deserved. Yeah. I think you've got the most awards out of anybody I know. I just have to, I was like, that's incredible absolutely and so well deserved I mean you are the most inspirational person I know you know so oh that's really kind of you thank you for being you and for you know for leading the way and having the conversation and for being brave and you know being a true leader in in your field um and I really urge all our listeners to reach out and to 
come and come and be in your world and your community and uh Mm because you are absolutely incredible and um such a big heart Anita as well and with you know your your mission to raise awareness around accessibility for for people with sensory loss um and in particular sight loss so thank you so much thank you thank you for raising my awareness and for supporting us and getting our websites um accessible uh, I am truly truly grateful um, no I'm, I'm I'm really appreciative of um you know you really kind of getting on board with that and and embracing it and I just just want to add one more thing, really, which was that, you know, it's really important for me that, you know, I've got a daughter who's 16, she's got a visual impairment. And, you know, at some point in her life, she's going to be wanting to develop herself in lots of different mm-hmm. ways. So and, and, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds more young youngsters out there with with sight loss. And they all just like anybody else, they, they need services and things that they can interact with that are accessible. So we can actually just like anything else in, in life, you know, where it's about the environment or in a global warning or uh, in Wales, we have a thing called the Future Generation um, Act. But, you know, if we can actually start to to make those things accessible now, then people like my daughter they can have a former, far more accessible future and they don't have to go, she wouldn't have to go through some of the things that I've had to go through because we've built those foundational stones. We created that awareness. And if we can, in even if somebody doesn't have a service mm-hmm. or, to, or business and is listening to this, but they know or they have discussions with other people, they just sort of go, oh, Joe, I was listening to this woman and she said, blah, blah, blah. It's like that ripple effect, isn't it? Yes. You know, that you, you plant a seed, it has not or you throw the pebble in the water, it has that ripple effect and other people get to have conversations and it just creates a difference. Yes, a huge difference. Thank you so much for speaking to so, that. Thank you. There's so much that we can we can all do, you know, for the for now and for the future generations as well. So mm. let's do it. This is a really yeah. exciting thing that and for me just feels like one of the most important things that we can do um as business owners it's it's up there it's that priority it's it's a a key priority i i believe so thank you so much thank you louisa Um, really appreciate it coming on and sharing all your wisdom and your energy with us and um thank you everybody who's joined us today and for listening please do reach out to anita and um lean in to to see where you might not be aware of what needs to change within your business so that we know we can get our our services world class for for everybody all right my friends thank you so much for joining us this week thank you anita uh once again and um until our next episode sending you all lots and lots of love namaste thanks for listening to the infinite prosperity podcast and if you like what you've heard and want to know more please go to louisahavers.com we just appreciate you so much so thank you for listening and hanging out with us if there's anything that we can do for you you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about really looking forward to hearing from you All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.